Hello and welcome to Exceptional T TV. My name is Karen Judd Smith. I'm the creator of the Ultimate Difference Formula and a social change leader's mentor, and I'm your host. Now, for years, my focus has been on the people who lead, who make good trouble, as John Lewis did throughout his life. And these people are not always those with great titles or formal positions. Very often, they are powerfully driven by a sense of social justice and a profound belief in the value of each person. So what we do here each week is to take time to look beneath the surface, to dig into the deeper currents that drive people, and importantly, to highlight the clues that their own successes have left behind. After all, what better way can we honor others' lives and to value our own than by learning from one another's strengths and successes as we each do our part to help make the world, hopefully, a much better place. Now, with each week, we explore lives, lessons learned, and the insights of remarkable individuals who make a difference. And today, I hear one of, I have one of these people here with us, and her name is Vanessa Russell. So even amidst the turmoil of life in America at the moment, we're going to take time to explore a little bit more of this dark underbelly of, our, of, 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 our, of humanity, and that is of, of human trafficking. So I really want to say thank you so much, Vanessa, for being with you and being with us and welcome to Exceptional TV today. Oh, thank you so much, Karen. Glad to be here. Yeah. So before we dive into the challenging topic of human trafficking itself, we'll have plenty of time for that. Um, please tell us a bit about your journey as, a, as an individual. I mean, mm. where you began, your life, and how you end up ended up as a social entrepreneur. How did you yeah. get here? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> what happened? What happened? <laughs> so, um, yeah, interestingly, so I'm originally from Pennsylvania. Um, my mom, I, I was born there in a, t a small town called Reading. And, um, and unfortunately, my parents were very young, 1921 interracial oh, couple, yeah. um, dur you know, during the seventies. Um, and, uh, they, they, there was some domestic violence there. There was some drug mm. issues and challenges there. And my mom ended up fleeing from the state, um, uh, moving to Florida temporarily, and then moving to uh, San Francisco wow. uh, permanently. Um, and so uh, during that time, uh, we were experiencing a great deal of poverty. Um, I was actually in foster care for a certain portion mm. of that time. Uh, we came to San Francisco. We were on welfare. Uh, we, you know, we really struggled um, and um, and but, you know, grateful that um, we were able to. I loved school and I loved mm, music good, yeah. and um, those kind of uh, uh, laid out a path for me uh, for um, some uh, professional success. I was able to graduate from uh, USF um, after 10 years of being in college um, while working <laughs> full time and um, paying my way through and. Um, and, and then, you know, as I was experiencing a ton of professional success, I decided, you know what, I want to give back to, to children and mm -hmm. youth that are very much like have similar backgrounds to my own. And I started to teach dance to those children. And, um, and in 2010, one of my 15 year old dance students, unfortunately was raped and in Hayward and was sold throughout California for a year. And that wow. is what led me to. Uh, founding Love Never Fails almost uh, nine years ago. Yeah. So, wow. so, my, I mean, so my path was kind of interesting in that, you know, I have all this personal experience that's very similar to the, the children that I and the adults that I work with. Um, and I thought it was going to be, you know, the connection was going to be dance, which certainly still is there um, because arts is a huge part of what we do. But, um, but little did I know I was actually going to be led to this horrendous thing, human trafficking, out of my own personal experience. Uh, you know, I was I was led to to this this horrible thing, human trafficking. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, human trafficking is something that I, I think an awful lot of us almost refuse to acknowledge exists. And oh, yeah. yet, and and yet, I think you know it. It could be the house next door, and and there's there's the human sex trafficking, and there's all kinds of other versions of of, of human trafficking. trafficking. You know, sexting, a uh, cyber sex, 
you know, sexting, pornography. There's many versions of pornography that are actually sex trafficking, you know, so absolutely it's organ trafficking. I mean, there's right. Like everything, right? Right. And, and that's part of the challenges. And I, I understand from a, a brief conversation we had some time back now, but you did work in the tech realms also for a number yeah. of years, right? So, yeah. and, that, and technology itself has enabled in so many ways all of these transnational organizations that literally operate without borders, without, without concern, and, and can do it so when, the, when there is no concern for all of that stuff, then just uh, are able to do horrendous things right under our noses. So, uh, you, you began, and tell us a little bit about when you, you started up your Love Never Fails. I mean, um, were you still, did you keep working? Did you, were you doing that at the same time? What were some of the challenges that you faced as you were doing that? And that, because I, I can imagine that there's, even, even at the personal level, you, you're being torn in one direction, you're being torn in the other, and then you're concerned. So you've got your work, your, your public face, your, your, your reputation, the, 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 your own heart being stretched to, to deal with what you were facing. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it was a really, really tough time. And, and uh, when I look back, I just, I, you know, I, I'm a praying person and I just, mm. you know, I was just, uh, I was just praying like crazy at, you know, at that time because my heart was so broken. You know, if you can imagine yeah. you're teaching if your 15 year old dance yeah. student, she stops coming to class. You think that she's stopped coming because For she some, no longer yeah. likes it. You know, yeah, well, yeah, you know teams, yeah. they don't, they change their mind. Yeah. She didn't. And then you, and then a few months later, someone brings her to you while you're teaching. I was teaching a recovery class and, um, and they, you know, someone came and knocked on my door and said, Hey, I got this kid that I found. And, um, I, I just knew you would know what to say. Cause you, you know, you work with kids and stuff. And I came out and I'm like, it's, it's her, mm, it's my right. student. And, uh, and did she, and did so, she know that she was going to be coming to see you or was this totally was, serendipity on, on both parts? Well, I think it was a divine appointment because yeah. I, I, uh, was there, it was a Monday night and I was at church and I was teaching a 12 mm. step recovery class. Right, right, right. And she didn't know that I did that. Right. right and right. and yeah, she yeah, was, yeah. She, she was literally Karen walking so, so, so she was being exploited on a track in, in the Bay Area in Oakland. Oh, God. And yeah. um, she was in red high, uh, was it red? No, purple. I think she said they were purple high heels. And um, they had put the, all these blisters on her feet. And yeah. she had to walk all night. Yeah. And, she, and, and for some reason, the, the, her feet were really the issue. And it, it kind of was like everything came together around her feet and she um she was tired of walking up and down her feet had blisters and she was tired of it and she said i'm gonna go and i'm going to uh go to this church uh mm -hmm. where i had taken some dance classes and i'm going to walk right. there and so she yeah. was walking down this street and someone from the church saw her walking right, in right. barely any clothes and they picked her up and they brought her they didn't know that i knew her they didn't know that Right, they brought right. her to me, and this was my student. And I thought, whoa. And so I, and I didn't know, you know, I come from a background of poverty, but for me, I'll just tell you, prostitution was, you know, a thing that older women were doing that wanted to be doing it. That's what I had in my mind. And right, this is right. their, their thing. I didn't know that kids could be, you know, uh, ensnared. I didn't know what the yeah. tactics were. I was very ignorant. I thought that human trafficking happened only in other countries. Right. You know, right. all those myths, right, that we right. believed that Absolutely. 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so here I met with her and I, I had coffee with her or she had hot cocoa, but sat down at this diner with her that night. And she began to tell me how she was choked and she was raped and she was, she was shot at. This wow. was a 15 year old. Okay. Yeah. And she had no affect. Care, no, no, no emotions. The only thing that she had emotion about was that she had blisters on her feet. It's it yeah. almost like she had to block out all that other stuff. Otherwise, she couldn't even function. I would, I would um, yeah. understand. Disassociation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for those clinical people that yeah. are watching, disassociation at the to the ninth yeah. degree. 
she had completely it, out of body experience. She said, "Oh yeah, I was." She was laughing. I was yeah. strangled, and I was this, and I was shot at, and I was raped, and and I'm like dying every right, right, every right. word. I'm like I am falling apart listening to my student being abused in this way, and 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 then you know of course I was like okay you know I'm I'm totally a type, and so I'm like we we're gonna fix this, we're gonna get you some <laughs> yeah. help, and yeah. what I learned later is about trauma bonding. Stockholm syndrome and yeah and yeah yeah it's not that simple and, yeah mm -mm. no so wow. it, it, it's been quite a learning journey for me uh you know those myths have fell away very quickly I became aware as I went and looked for her do you know how many times she was picked up by the police that year 18 wow. times 18 times she went back to her exploiter and or exploiters and by the way I think it was more she told me there was more but I counted 18 so you know it it, it it like you said very complicated and the best solution is to prevent it altogether right but if you right. cannot having a restorative plan for people is so key um, there's just no such thing as you go back home you just no. forget about it no and you just move on with your life Right. I mean, that's it. it there, there are similarities there with, you know, I've spoken with people who deal with a lot of the um, they work with religious communities literally around the world on on elements for restoring. Yeah. Whether they be um, criminals, you know, who, or people who have been imprisoned to child soldiers who have been, you know, of course, abused, yeah. captured, uh, totally traumatized. And yet, oh my God. you know, and there's for the family and for the community, there's so much shame, difficulty, not knowing what to do, not knowing how to deal with these people. And the reintegration, it's not just a matter of, okay, you're, you, you're free to go home now. Yeah, as, as you just said, you can't just walk back in the house and, you know, or, or wherever it, they, they can walk back to if they can, and then just continue on with life it just doesn't work that way it's just a profound yeah. uh, and dramatic change to a person's life and could, could you um tell me you, you've you've mentioned a couple of times the myths what are some of mm. the key myths that you you see around you in general you know in general day-to-day -day community about human yeah. trafficking yeah, I think that that one that this happens only in third world countries or other places is one that it only happens to girls is another right, myth right. Um, that um, that the people who are actually perpetrating the crime are only men. That's right. another one that that, right. that, that it, exploiters right. and buyers can't be women. Um, the, you know, so there's just the, there, there's a ton of, of myths that they want it. That this is what right. they, you know, they they want to be there. There's always otherwise. Batman. Why wouldn't they be? Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, they were given the opportunity to leave. Why didn't they just leave? Nobody was guarding them. They could have just yeah. walked out. But they don't understand the psychology yeah, of it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's many myths um, just due to lack of experience and you know and and again I always say to people when I'm doing education, look, don't beat yourself up. I, I believe the same myths when I came to this. Right, the point right. is, you're here to get educated now. Let me tell you some things, and hopefully you'll receive them and know that nobody wants this, nobody chooses this. Even people who work, uh, who are part of the sex workers union, who is you know pretty pretty active here in the Bay Area. Even those individuals, when you sit down and you talk to them, and I've done this because right. I think it's important that you hear people sure. out. Sure, absolutely. Um, they say they were first brought into, you know, um, sex work as a as a minor, which we know you don't you don't mm. uh, choose to be a sex worker as a minor. Right. You know? I mean, it's, I, it's circumstance. Yeah. There's something that's yeah. happened. If you had an alternative, you would have chosen something else. Mm -hmm. And now you are, you know, you are indoctrinated. You have accepted it or maybe, you know, maybe you have a couple of regulars and you're used to doing it and it's easier than working a nine to five. Right. And that's kind of the mindset that many of the sex workers have arrived at. And and that's fine. That's that's their that's their thing. Right. But all I know is that the when they were introduced, that they experienced child rape. Right. And 
you know, whether it was coercive or forced, um, you know, that somebody who was, who had power took advantage of someone who did it. Right. So for, for people, are there any ways that the average person who's becoming more aware of human trafficking, are there, are there signs that they can see in a situation and what can they do? I mean, because in the end, people want to know, well, as I become more aware of this problem, what is it that I can do? What, you know, how do mm -hmm. I, how do I, how do I help? Even if it's just, you know, is it making a call about somebody that you're concerned about? Um, what, what are some, just for the average person on the, on the street who doesn't condone, who does not want to be involved in this, who are concerned, what can they do? Yeah, so first of all, get your phone out and, 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 and put a new contact in, and, it, and it's 888-3737-888. That is the National Human Trafficking Hotline. So that was 888-3737-888. 888. What I'm yes. going to do right now while you keep talking, and I'm going to put a, okay. I, I'm going to put a, um, a, a QR code on the screen with that number in it. If they, um, if they, that would just pull it onto their phone, and in theory, they could just, um, yeah. exactly save it. Exactly. Save it. So, 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 let me just tell you what will happen. So there are. It's twenty four seven. Um, there's someone there to uh, pick up the phone. I have called myself. The people are very diligent. They're kind. They're they're trauma informed. They're trained, and they gather information and they will gather it anonymously if you'd like. And their responsibility is to log the information and to disseminate it to the local law enforcement and or FBI. And so this is, this is one of the great things that you can do, whether it's labor trafficking or sex trafficking, um, you can do that. There also is, um, so, so, and, and let me, so let me just give you the red flag. So if you see someone who's loitering, you know, hanging out on corners in your neighborhood right, right. Um, and, and getting in and out of cars, that is a strong indicator that there's some kind of trafficking going on, right? Um, and you're going to see that more in urban settings, usually not in like a suburban setting. Suburban settings, um, if you notice that there's somebody who lives in a house and they never come out and they're never walking freely. Uh, there was a case in um, San Jose where a, a woman, elderly woman, noticed that there was a woman that only came out to put the garbage outside once a week. And that's it. She never came out to get groceries, to go anywhere in a car. And she called and that person was here from another country being labor trafficked and being forced to basically be a domestic slave in that home. Right. And so if you see something like that, um, you can report it and the local law enforcement is obligated to, to go and go check, check on yeah. them and do a well, it's called a well check. Right. If you think, if you hear people, even in a domestic violence situation, if we ignore people screaming and yelling and beating each other up, we're going to be ignoring either DV, domestic right. violence or human trafficking. Right. So we can call up our local law enforcement or the hotline and um, say we think something's going on again it's logged it's it's right. documented it's disseminated to the local law enforcement to go and verify what's going on now right now in this political climate some people are like eh, I don't really want to call the police over because they might kill uh, you know especially if the right. people who live in that home yeah. are of people of color you know uh, they may kill them I don't you know so there's some some trepidation about sure. that and so and so I understand that. However, if you hear somebody screaming and being beaten on, um, you, you know, yeah. it is your obligation yeah. to report that. And, um, and, and so there's that. And then if you encounter something online that is disturbing, there's a cyber tip line on the National Missing Children, uh, National Miss, NICMIC, National uh, Council for Missing and Exploited Children. And, um, and so if you go to Nick Mick, I believe it's Nick Mick dot org and you, um, sorry. Um, so what's that again? It's uh, N C M E C N um, N M C. Yeah. Actually, you know what? They made it easy for us. It's missing kids dot org. Okay. Go to missing kids dot org. If your child is missing, you can 
um, report them missing. If you uh, think that somebody is experiencing, um, uh, they are being uh, sold online or being displayed online, a child, you can report that there at, with the cyber sexting tip line. Um, there also is some some good um, white papers there about sexting for, for parents and also being exposed to pornography, online pornography, and what that looks like. There's also a uh, resource there for, for, for people, children that are runaways that might need a bus ticket home. Right, um, let's right. say they ran away, now they need a Greyhound home. Uh, there is a, a way that they can get access. So that's through missingkids.org. So, so what, I, what, I'm, what I'm going to, yeah, is Vanessa, after this, what I would like you to, if you would be so kind, just to yeah. send all of these URLs, you know, yeah. um, and I will make sure that underneath, uh, you know, the replay of this, um, yeah. it, all of these key links will be here as well as your yep. own organization and we'll get it we'll start and get into into yeah, that too yeah. but but to have these resources just easily available to people as such a, otherwise they got to go and and then they wonder you know is this good is it not good because yes. i think even even you know as you mentioned you know people feel trepidation about calling the police whether it's domestic violence or you know potentially trafficking issue um, you know, there's often the concern that, well, well, what can they do unless they find something definitive, just their very presence? Does that increase the immediate threat to the person who is being held or violated one way or another? Um, because, you know, because you, you earlier said that this young lady who had been picked up 18 times at least by the police and yet was still out there, you know, because what, what? You know, there's, there's these huge gaps, you know, holes in the network, in the safety network for, the, for this situation. Yeah, I think at that time, one of the challenges is that she was in the foster care system. Uh, and so the, 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 there's a, some tremendous issues with the foster care sy system in that um, legally, wow. the, the way that the, so the child is picked up from the street and then the yeah. child goes into a place that each county has where they get their medical mm. like a, a health check done and and then what happens is it, within the same day they're returned back to their foster parents wow. but if the foster parents are mm. ill-equipped to uh handle the child right. at that point um and and many of them are um what what happens is as in the case for my student they give their the cell phone back to the child and then, and right then back the exploiter yeah. says come outside yeah. and then the child goes walks right outside and they pick her and up right from the right. house and then boom they're back to the street and so yeah. what happens with law enforcement and i don't blame them is that they get there's apathy that sets in it's like i picked up this girl last week i brought her to the center they returned her back to f her foster home you know yeah. this is wasting yeah. my time yeah. So when what do they, they start yeah. doing? They, they, they just drive by it. now. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's just, yeah, there's just difficulties at every turn. So in order not to get stuck in just how difficult the whole thing is, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about what you're doing and, and what you've seen and been able to achieve and accomplish through, through Love Never Fails Us. Yeah. So early on, um, we realized that, you know, uh, there was a study in Minnesota that showed that for every dollar that you spend in aftercare, if I mean, every yeah. dollar you spend in prevention, mm -hmm. um, you save thirty four dollars in aftercare. So the math is very simple. Prevention aside of the human factor. Right. 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 I mean, the human, yeah, the, the human factor is enormous, but it's just yeah, you often have to turn it into a, a dollar sign a in order to case. help people, yeah, make right. sense yeah. of it, yeah. So I've had to do that, and, you know, as you mentioned, my background is in tech, and I, you know, I've, I've held corporate, uh, mm. you know, global sales roles, so I understand that the, everybody in the business world think in terms of ROI, and so, right. you know, early on, I was like, we need to get ahead of this thing, we need to prevent it, and so we designed a prevention education curriculum that we took out 
uh, initially to 5,000 students in the Bay Area. And this was a group of volunteers. None of us were doing this full time. Right, right. A bunch of volunteers going into the schools and teaching kids about human trafficking. Just just aware, just awareness, right? Just, yes, just helping them aware. Understand. Yeah. Yes, exactly. The, the, and aware, so, the awareness and the what to do in the case that you start to find yourself somehow compromised. Being groomed, yeah. being recruited. What are the tactics? Yeah. What's he going to say? What's she going to say? She's going to be your instant BFF? Yeah. Is she going to, what are your vulnerabilities? Have yeah. you been abused? Are you hungry? Do you need, you know, yeah. and it's, it, it and it's all about like, you know, speaking up saying, I'm hungry. I need friends. I need, you know, I need help. Right talking to people in your community and them saying, you know what, instead of you relying on this dude you just met on social media to get you some tennis shoes, you know, yeah. let some me of the know, people I'll you, get yeah. you some tennis shoes, you yeah. know, it's yeah. really that simple. It really is that simple. And, and the, the, the thing is, is that we haven't taken the time to express that to the youth in our communities and the children in our communities. Like, Dude, if all you need is tennis shoes, I got you on that. I right. do, you do not need to look for somebody. Now, oftentimes what they need is love because they have parents that are drug addicted or maybe working three and four jobs to keep a roof over their heads right. in the Bay Area. And so <laughs> then it's like, can you know, can we form some mentoring groups? Can you be part of our dance team? What can we do to make you feel like you belong? You know, and so we did a lot of that early on. And what we arrived at, Karen, is that after about four years in, housing was a miss. We, 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 across the nation, we had about 500 beds uh, dedicated to trafficking victims across the nation at that wow. time. Across, By across America. The nation. Wow. Where we say that there are between 100 and 300,000 victims, we had 500 beds. Wow for trafficking victims. So we decided to open up our first home. This was about uh, six years ago. Well, actually just five, going on six, yeah. So, and since then we've housed 141 women and children uh, in, in you know, 18 a, a fifth, program. A fifth of the nation. That's what <laughs> I mean, I'm I, saying. Yeah. Yeah. I know, wow. and so, you know, just to get put this in context, we would do street outreach once a month for three hours. That year when wow. we said there were 500, we encountered 300 people on the street that said they would come with us if we had housing. 300, and the entire nation had 500. Yeah, and I thought, and that, and that well, was from once a month, three hour, three hour outreach. That's bizarre. Yes. I mean, exactly. So, and so, and we're talking kids, adults, women, men. Uh, members of our LGBTQ community, right. just the just the whole gamut, uh, looking for mo predominantly the people we were targeting were sex trafficking victims, and we, we weren't even right. tapping into labor trafficking. I mean, right, we weren't right. going to the right. the salons and going to the agricultural farms and places like that that probably needed even more. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we're yeah. we're talking. So anyway, we we opened up the homes. We now have twenty five beds. Um, we have three houses, um, so we are housing um, transitional age uh, men, we are housing mm -hmm. families, and mm -hmm. we are housing women with their children, and we're also housing girls between the ages of 13 and 17, and these are all different housing installations. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and, you know, so we're, we're, just, we're just so grateful because this housing is a foundational piece. You know, mm -hmm. and, and then and then as people began to uh, graduate from our program, um, we realized, especially in the Bay Area, they didn't have the sustainable uh, car careers. Right. And, and so then that's the other piece. Right. Right. And so this is this has been a part that's been really, really hard. Like everyone gets the housing part. Right. But the part that is like really driving me crazy, I got to tell you, is like we have all these r rapid rehousing initiatives. Right. Where we're getting people, out, you know, off the street. We've got to get people the sustainable life skills and job skills, career skills, um, so that they can make at least twenty dollars an hour. You're not making twenty dollars an hour in the Bay Area. Yeah, you you, you can't afford your rent. <laughs> you can't. It's more that it's like sixty, seventy percent of your income 
And if one thing goes wrong, right, you're right. you're done for. You're yeah, back if, in the arms of an exploiter, yeah. of a of a, an abusive partner, abusive or drug addicted family members. There there's no. It's not financial freedom or sustainability. And so what we did was about uh, four years into our housing program, we, because of my background in tech, we became a Cisco Networking Academy. Yeah. And, and now we are a California cybersecurity and networking pre-apprenticeship program. And so what we're about is getting paid apprenticeships for these populations we serve, not just trafficking survivors, but homeless, DV, Re-entry, veterans, um, undocumented, um, foster youth, those populations that are highly vulnerable to trafficking, we are targeting them to get them Google certified, Cisco and Agile Scrum Master certified. Cool. And our hopeful, you know, our goal is let's get them into these twenty dollar an hour and above jobs. Um, and let's let's get them financial freedom, not just right. a bed. Mm -hmm. Because because it's 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 the financial freedom, but it's, it's more than that because then, then they're building their own, their own personal reputation the way they want that is not dependent on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's and dignity. The, the, yeah. yeah. It's their it's, own it's dignity. Human it's human dignity. Yep. Yeah. And you know, I, I got to tell you the, the people, uh, I have a woman right now. She graduated from our program. Her son is, has autism. She was uh, the stack. The, the deck was stacked against her, you know, trafficking victim eight years, you know, came from foster care, adopted, um, you know, just all kinds of difficult background. And she's a Cisco network engineer now. She's cool. she's she's she has her own apartment. She has her own car. She takes vacations. Yeah. I have another late young lady, same kind of background, yep. same situation. It's these are diamonds in the rough. Sure. They are yep. waiting for somebody to come and see how Their potential, yep. gifted they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so part of what you're, what are you looking for in terms of um, organizational support, uh, people who are interested and curious, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, if I, if there were two things I could ask for, one would be, Obviously, we're always in need of financial support. Right, so right. If, it, if there's any help that people yeah. can lend for that, that's great. Our beds, just to give you an idea, our beds cost about $30,000 a year for the women coming straight mm. off the street because of the clinical care that they need. Yep. They need so much care. And we have round-the-clock staff. We're very intense about, you know, what we're doing. And, uh, and you know, we provide cognitive therapy, behavior, uh, art therapy, domestic yeah. violence counseling, nutrition, gardening, yeah. <laughs> you know, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. so it, it, it gets pretty expensive. So that's one. But the second thing is I really need some corporate folks to come and, and, and align with, with me and help me with this apprenticeship program for, for right. these graduates. And, you know, I, you know, somebody, I, I, I've been knocking on doors left and right. And, you know, because we're a small nonprofit, um, sometimes there's this, you know, trepidation, like, mm -hmm. you know, maybe we should go with some of the big guys. Yeah. Um, but the yeah. big guys don't have the rapport. They don't have the, the feet on the street with the mm -hmm. populations that I serve. And so, you know, sometimes it's a little challenging because I, I want people to um, uh, kind of see that when you say things like, for example, Black Lives Matter. When you say we want to have diverse workforces, um, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm giving you that opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, 50% yeah. of my mm -hmm. students are women. 30, 40% of my students are are black. 20% are are Latino. Um, you know, I'm giving that opportunity. I have 300 people, 300 classes currently running with individuals 300 classes so i have the populations but i can't really keep their attention if there's no job at the at end, the end of, of the, the rainbow yeah yeah and that's one of the challenges with corporations is um it, it, often you know, i've seen them they have their their social good office even yeah yeah and mostly the, it's 
I, I, I probably shouldn't, but you know, it's like, it's lip service. Is it's, it spin? It's some, I'll say it for you. Is it spin or is it real, right? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> I guess I've been around the UN for too long and don't like to say what I really think of the time, but you know, but too often, not all are, you know, I will, I will say not all are, but so many um, have their very oh, sanitized version of of social good or of you know helping their community, um, because the work of really uh, making a difference in people's lives is not simple, and um, and yet and yet the the same um, I I think increasingly in the corporate world where there will be a lack of focus on the core human element in their corporate environment that allows them to sanitize their social good, that's going to come back and, and, and bite them in their own business. Because in the end, you, you know, engagement, employee engagement is an enormous challenge for most of them because yeah. they haven't unlocked that code yet of how to keep people aligned in their business, which is what they want to do, and yet still take care of that that very human core, the heart, you know, the soul of the dignity of human beings. Yeah. And that's, that's such a, um, and when, I think when corporations can learn how to do that, it'll help their bottom line bizarrely. Um, that's a good term, I know. But anyway, um, <laughs> so, so, but I, the, there are connections between these two, these yes. two pieces. And so oh, it's, yeah. It's still a huge work that is yet to be done as I have people involved in, uh, you know, in digital transformation are recognizing they need to build their leadership with, with resilience and with, you know, you know, empathy and all of these nice sounding words. But yes. they've still got they to do the real. Good. Yeah, but they've got to the get words. into the doing of that and not just the talking about it. And that's yeah. the ch- that's the challenge. Uh, and I'm sorry to hear you are having such a big challenge, but I think it's it's also, I guess, my you know, and I guess this is a little bit of my own bailiwick, whatever. But that um, the future, uh, the future of America, the future of the world. You know, I come from not just America, but I've lived most of my life here now. But I still identify with other countries as well. Yeah. But um, but unless we as human beings start to do it better we're going to keep running into brick walls um yes and and situations that just don't work and we're going to be trying to get back to what was great and good but you know um yeah yeah no it it, it, this is not this work is not for the faint of heart and um, not at all and 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 i think that's you know unfortunately we're in an era we're in a time where everything is 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 i'll just you know, it's the fast food style, right? It's, Let's get these people yeah. cleaned up, working, and get them get them healed up, and get them out there. You know, it's yeah. like. Let's do it quick. You know, I'll give you yeah. a little bit of money. I, I just participated in a grant, and I saw that it, it's a it's a federal grant, and it's a ten million dollar grant. And I looked at um, the metrics, right, to get somebody mm-hmm. prepared to obtain a paid apprenticeship program. Uh, now let me give you some context when I was in the tech world yeah when they would send us to a boot camp for (laughs) one week for 40 hours and this is you know to become a CCNA or one you know obtain a certification one week boot camp was three to five thousand dollars for for me as a professional now I'm going to take a person off the street that has never learned tech Right. And I'm going to get them mentally well. You know, I'm going to get them stabilized, the psycho, psychosomatic stabilization. Right. And then I'm going to teach them tech. And and I'm going to give them financial incentives to stay in the game that will maybe pay their bus ticket to come to me or pay for their Internet mm-hmm. so they can log on. I'm going to do all that in twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And this is this is what this is the best opportunity I've seen. I got to be honest, this is like, I'm like 2,500, I'm jumping at it because it's something. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, I'll fundraise for the rest, but it's literally to actually care for someone 
in the way that they need to be cared for. It's more like five, six thousand dollars a student, but we're like, oh, that's too expensive. We're not right. going to invest that. Well, this is, uh, I mean, just phenomenal, clearly phenomenal what you're doing um, and uh, um, addressing such a, a difficult area uh, that is that is really challenges us as human beings, you know, to, mm, to really yes. care for one another, to stretch ourselves, to I mean, even just even just to reach out and provide a little help and incentive, you know, to to others. My goodness. Um, so in your years, in your years of experience, <laughs> did I tell you I'm 21 again? I think. I yeah, yeah, you. yeah. Me too. Yeah. Um, don't, 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 you know, don't, don't, don't mind the gray. Okay. <laughs> don't, let me don't, don't mind away don't, again. Yeah, don't, don't mind the gray. Um, <laughs> I, I guess I've accepted that mine is. It looks right. beautiful on you, I must say. Very, you are rocking your gray there, Karen. I love it. Thank you, Vanessa. <laughs> but back to the actual question. <laughs> we had to get a little laugh yeah, break we, in there. We have, have to. Really important. <laughs> life has to be fun. There has to be parts of life that is fun, surprising, wholesome, and good, you know, as well, along with the challenges. And we can meet the challenges. And human, humans can do that. Um, yeah. But it's also important that we do laugh and and enjoy one another. Yeah. But the question was, yeah, what what is one thing that what one thing that surprised you that you've learned that you know you 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 didn't perhaps expect to learn and yet it's become such a a part of your life. Um, yeah. You know, I think it's a personal thing. So my mm -hmm. grandmother was an exploited woman and my grandfather was a buyer. And I really didn't understand that uh, mm -hmm. when I first came to this. And, um, and, you know, I didn't grow up around them. And, you know, these things about our past, they have a way of following us right. and kind of um, getting our attention, let's mm -hmm. just say. Mm -hmm. And so... I remember early in my early years because of the trauma I had experienced personally, I said, you know, I'm I, I want to be so far away from that kind of stuff. I'm going to go work in tech and I'm going to be a manager right, and I'm make right. lots of money and I'm going to just hide myself in this. And then all of a sudden this collided with yeah. my student mm -hmm. and, and I, I could not turn away from it. And I tell you, it is the best thing that's ever happened to me because uh, in that um, in that place where I no longer was hiding my background and I was no longer right, right. ashamed of who I was and my my per my journey right. uh, is where I found all my power and all my um, all of my purpose in life and um, and so you know I just I'm just a firm believer that um, again this divine intervention that mm -hmm. was just like just just collided with me and made me realize that um, you know I I might have had shame about my family of origin and in my you know my experiences right, right. but all of that was actually going to be make me very relevant to the people that I served right. and it was going to be extremely valuable um, where I was headed and so that sort of ha was an epiphany that mm -hmm. I came to and it has sustained me you know, because this is, you know, I've, I've told many people residential care is the hardest thing you'll ever do in your life. Caring mm -hmm. for people in a home setting, it is so hard. Yeah. It is so hard. And so, but it's not hard for me, you know, yeah. because it, it, it there's something very much in, intertwined in who I am and my purpose and, and why I'm here um, that, um, that keep, gives me the strength to, to, to keep going. You're, you're clearly a strong woman and clear and direct and it's you are so inspiring as an individual so and to hear I think that's a, such a powerful message to be told because who we are where we've come from what we've experienced yeah we may have had some role in it but but the bigger picture of the world especially you know our circumstances of where we came from our families our backgrounds we don't choose that not, <laughs> not, no. and to the extent that we can can fully accept ourselves, 
then then we really yes. created a strong foundation for for leaping forward and, and making a difference yeah in our own lives and the lives yeah. of others so yeah a really thank you for that 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 insight because i i think that's something i hope that resonates with many people who who heard yeah. that and um i'm going to ask one last question we've still got a little bit of time but i know you've probably got a, a busy life and and beds to get and and much more than that but what um yeah, is there is there anything that you just as a as a, a final thought to to anybody who's listening? What would you what kind of a plea would you make to them, or a, a comment, or a recommendation that um, as to how you what you've learned from all of this for their own life, whether they're dealing with these kinds of issues or not? And and to some extent, I think you just said that, but in another way. What has your life taught you about being successful um, that you would like others to to hear, to take away from from time with Vanessa Russell this morning? <laughs> well, I you know, again, I would just re reinforce that if you're hiding from anything, if you if there's anything kind of locked away, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you let a little bit of that out. You can become one with it. You accept yeah. it. You um, you appreciate it. It might be ugly, but let it out, appreciate mm -hmm. it, and uh, understand how it's shaped you for this mm -hmm. time and this this moment. And there's always someone around you that um, needs to be encouraged like you do. And so um, I would, you know, that, that would be my, uh, you know, just final words yeah. is just to embrace who you are, you know, all of your circumstances and, you um, and don't um, don't hide. You know, uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, and 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 there's only. You know, I love the the quote, and I can't remember who said it, but you know uh, that we are uh, we never we never um, fail if we continue to try. Right? We're always right. we either learn right. or we you know, or we win. And you know, and so that for me has been sort of my 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 uh mantra or the thing that i live by in terms of um you know just just refusing to fail refusing to stop refusing to uh you know hide um right. and um and then the the other piece that you know i think is so appropriate for this time um here we are the day after the election <laughs> and there's so much yes. division in our mm -hmm. world is um of course you know um it's really about letting love lead. And, you know, I, there are so many people that are, I'm around that, um, you know, I don't agree with, with their point of view right, on things. Right. I, I'm, a, I, you know, I'm around a very diverse population all the time, Absolutely, but, I'm sure you are. but I, I find things to love about every single person. Mm -hmm. There's, there's always something to love about a person. If you gotta, you got to, um, Sometimes you have to search, <laughs> yeah. search for it, but 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 yeah. try to make it your goal to find something to love about the unlovable, about the 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 difficult, and it will make your day. Um, certainly, will point you closer to I think it, enable your purpose, but also just just make your day lighter and uh, better, and so. I, you know, that those are sort of principles that I try to live by. And, um, and I hope that the women and the men that I serve, uh, they feel that when they come in my presence, that they may have been, you know, women that are being trafficked, they have to sleep with like 20, up to 21 people a day between nine okay, and 21 yeah. people a day. They, they, they're such yeah. shade they're carrying. They're yeah. such, dis, you know, disgust. And yet when I see them, they're nothing but beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. They're nothing but precious. Yeah. They're yeah. nothing but they're nothing but just every everything that I want to meet in a person. And and I, I you know, some people might say, Well, you're delusional. No, it's just that I'm <laughs> looking through a lens yeah. of love. So yeah. Well, that's uh such a wonderful message because I think um I mean at the heart of it, and I guess this is I guess I came to my own experience very differently, uh, but even just the fact that I grew up out in the middle of nowhere, uh, 
relatively speaking, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, where my friends were the lamb, the kangaroo, the willow tree. And I, yes, I met, you know, I met people. I went to school. I went on a school bus, you know, whatever else. But on the yeah. farm, you know, there was a small, there was the family and then there was all. The, so people were always almost magical and mysterious to me. Mm. But the thing that I've noticed, because I've worked in, I've worked in blue collar environments, I've, I've had meals with presidents of countries, you know, and everywhere in between. But each person, I don't care who they are, they, human beings just totally amaze me what they can do, yeah. what they can be, how they can respond, their native resilience. Um, it's, yeah, I, you know, it's just like you look at the look at the the world, and it's utterly amazing. The life in the oceans, in the in the stars, in the physics of the world, it's it's utterly amazing. And when we look yeah. at look into the eyes and hearts and soul of each individual in the same way, it's yeah. how can we not be amazed? Right. And so, um, I thank you for all of the work that you're doing, Vanessa. And no, I've it's really been an honor to be with you today. And I certainly hope that a number of people will find some of the links below. And even if it's just, you know, taking the information, the num telephone numbers and the awareness uh, that you have helped bring, uh, it's been such an honor to, to share this time with you. So I thank you very much for that, Vanessa. Thank you, yeah. Karen. Great to be with you. So yeah. good. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. So again, um, I want to thank Vanessa and I would like to invite people back to be with us again same time same place next week 10 a.m pacific for another show and hopefully actually I, I'm still hoping that this lady she has done an awful lot of uh, research on transgenerational trauma mm, I gotta listen to that yeah so um, hopefully she's studied that a lot of course a lot in the context of the Hol holocaust survivors and things like that but a lot of really wow. intensive study uh, on how uh, generations are impacted by trauma. And this is part of what, you know, to one to some extent, this is part of what you have mentioned oh, and yes. talked about today. And so I, again, I look forward to meeting with you and talking with you again, and, and we'll, we'll have to stay connected. It's been wonderful, Vanessa. So this is uh, Vanessa and Karen uh, signing on off from today's exceptional TV. We thank you all very much for joining us and we'll see you again next week. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you.